Hi friends, uh, today we will discuss another topic from object oriented system analysis and design and which is one of the important topic of this subject and that topic is software development process. Okay, so although we guys have studied this concept in earlier semesters and in this semester as well we will be going to discuss it once again. Uh, so now here you can see I have listed down the points on the board and with the help of these points we will try to understand and discuss what is software development process okay so in this explanation we will be going to discuss what is the process of software development and how the development team is going to approach towards the development of software and what will be their strategies what process they will take for developing the software and what are those phases that the development team will perform for developing the software and, and all those things we'll be going to discuss in this lesson okay so now let us start with the first point so what this first point is saying is a system can be viewed as a process okay so software development is a complete process it contains various activities starting from the requirement gathering till the maintenance there are some seven to eight steps involved and all those steps are called as a process okay so if an organization or development team wants to develop any software application that development team has to go through all these various steps or phases okay so all those steps are called as process okay so this software development is a complete process that's why they are saying it as a system here they are referring with the system as software application a software application can be viewed as a process okay so if you want to develop any software application we have to go through with all those steps next it's a process of change refinement and transform okay so what we do in that process of performing some set of activities what the development team will do in that process which contains some set of activities in those steps the development team will change and the development will team will refinement and transform okay so with each and every step of the software development whether it is starting from a requirement gathering or requirement collection and then analysis the next is design implementation uh, testing and then uh, maintenance so with all these steps they will going to make change in the software okay so with each and every step necessary changes gets applied in the system and with each and every step with each and every phase additional refinements they will going to make inside the system but if the system was partially built in the first two three stages and in the next two three stages more refinement gets applied on the system so that at the end we will get a complete fully functional system okay so in those steps they will apply the refinement okay they will try to add more and more features in the system with each and every phases of the system development okay now the next one is transform with each and every step of the system development they will going to transform the functionality they will going to transform the system from one state to another state okay so that is what the meaning of process where we transform the system as per the requirement okay so as on we keep on following the various steps or the activities of software development there will be continuous change gets applied in the system we will get more refinement in the system and we continuously keep on transforming the system in terms of features in terms of functionality and in terms of appearance and behavior okay so that is what the meaning of this second point so all these things we do in software development process okay I hope you guys have understood the second point. Now the third point is software development is an addition to existing product. Okay, so in software development process, what we used to do is we some of the times we used to add some features into existing product. Uh, this may be happen that uh, you might get a project where the system is already been developed and the customer wants you to add additional features add additional functionalities in the system so that is also the software development process where customer will give you the 
complete software working software and the customer wants you to add or customize the software as per the new requirements in that case the development team has to study the software and they have to start adding new features functionalities inside the existing product or in existing system okay now the next point is one sub process replaces another sub process to adapt the requirements okay so in the process of software development we continuously used to make changes in the software why we continuously used to make changes in the system at the time of development because once we got the requirements we will develop the system based on those requirements so after releasing the first version of that software this may be happen that client may give some more requirement in that case to incorporate those new requirements given by the customer inside the system they have to replace existing functionalities existing sub processes with the new sub processes okay so a sub process can be considered as a feature or a functionality or a module now the next uh, point is each process is divided into smaller sub process uh, for the purpose of dividing the complete problem into smaller sub problem so that the development team can deal with the problem easily what they used to do is they used to divide the entire process into smaller sub processes and then they will start on targeting or developing the solution for those smaller sub processes and once they get the solution for all those sub processes then they will combine the result or combine all those sub processes to make a larger system okay so this process is called as divide and conquer where development team used to divide the entire large or big problem into smaller sub problem into smaller sub processes so that it can become easy for the development team to find the solution for that problem or that process okay uh, so now the next point saying is each sub process must have the following okay so once they divide the entire process into sub processes then each and every sub process must have this following points okay so each and every sub process should provide the description in terms how it works okay so when the development team divide the entire system into sub processes then for each and every sub processes they need to mention the specification okay the specification is how it works okay so how they will be going to develop that sub process okay and for developing that sub process what requirements they want okay how user will be going to interact with that sub process okay and finally once that sub process gets developed completely then that sub process should have the ability to integrate itself with some other sub processes okay so that description has to be provided by the development team uh, regarding how it has to work okay and the next detail is specification of the input required for that sub process to develop what type of input that sub process will going to take from the user that information also they need to specify and then specification of the output produced uh, so development team should have this idea of input and output at the time of beginning itself so that they will not have any confusion regarding the input and output of the sub process okay so for that purpose development team should have the clear picture of input required to that sub process as well as the output produced by that sub process okay and the next is software development takes place into following phases so as we guys already know that software development process is divided into various phases okay and we have already discussed those phases okay and here uh, they have mentioned each phase transform the output so we have some 6 to 7 phases and in each and every phase the output the functionality of the software gets improved that is what each phase transform the output and based on the transformations they have divided that entire software development process into 
three transformations transformation one transformation two and transformation three so we have seen that the software development process is divided into three phases or divided into three transformations which are transformation one transformation two and transformation three and now let us see what will happen what changes gets reflected with each and every transformation of system development okay so now here you can see in this diagram these are here you can clearly see the transformations are mentioned transformation 1 transformation 2 and transformation 3 with each and every transformation the features and functionalities and behavior of the system gets enhanced okay so now uh, here you can see the first the development team will have some set of requirements what are what are the uses of the system first once the development team gets the requirement then they will try to put those requirements in the form and with that requirements they want to find out the uses of the system okay how the user will going to use the system they will make that systematic plan out of the given requirement and with that plan they will come to know what will be the various uses of the system and once the system gets developed and how the users will going to use that system that list will be prepared okay so once that list is been prepared then the transformation one gets applied after the transformation one the problem statement was analyzed okay that is what problem statement will be analyzed okay and uh, translates the user requirements into system requirements and responsibilities in the transformation one the user requirements will be translated into the system requirements and responsibilities okay and uh, in the transformation two begins with problem statement and ends with detailed design okay so once they complete the transformation one then that problem statement has to be taken in the transformation two to come up with the detailed design of that system that is what we have mentioned here begins with the problem statement and ends with the detailed design and in the transformation two what they does is they work on how to build software okay and its development and its testing all these activities they will be going to perform during the transformation two once they get the design now, now the next thing is that we have they have to implement the design okay design implementation and detail okay once they done all these things that is design implementation and detail they will get the final system that is system software product okay and at the end of the transformation three the development team will have the end product with them transformation three refines the detailed design into system deployment okay they turn the detailed design into the software which can be easily deploy at the client side that will satisfy the user need okay so these are the various transformations and with each and every transformation they will going to make improvement in the behavior of the software they will be going to make the improvement in the efficiency and appearance and functionalities of the system